For this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Berlin, and Berlin is being treated in the hospital for hypokalemia following prolonged use of Lasix. During a chart review, the therapist finds a blood pH of 7.51, a partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 43 millimeters of mercury, and an HCO3 negative or bicarbonate of 32 milliequivalents per liter. Which of the following findings is the most anticipated? So we have A, muscle twitching or tetany, B, Kussmaul respirations, C, increased chest AP diameter, and D is hyperventilation. All right, so let's go up to the top and let's knock this one out. This is a good question. So we have Berlin is being treated in the hospital for hypokalemia. That's where I want to slow up first. We got to understand what that medical terminology is. Hypo meaning below or decreased. Cal is, is short for potassium and emia is blood. So really what we're talking about is low blood potassium hypokalemia. Great. Now it says following prolonged use of Lasix. Now we also got to slow up there too. We got to understand what that really means. What is Lasix? All right, let's slow up. What is Lasix? We know it's a medication, also known as furosemide. All right, and it's also known as a loop diuretic. Now, why is this so important? Well, it's so important because it's actually a potassium wasting diuretic. That means that the, the potassium is being filtered. It, it, it's being excreted out of the body, and that can produce hypokalemia. All right. So the fact that the patient's been on prolonged use of Lasix, it makes sense that they have hypokalemia. Now let's continue down the line. It says during a chart review, the therapist finds a blood pH of 7.51. Looks like we're going to be slowing up a few times here. All right. Blood pH. It's something that you have to know for the MPTE. If you're looking at arterial blood gases, you have to know the normal ranges for pH. All right. Normal ranges. There you go. If you're in the car, you're lifting up the weights. What is it? C come on, come on. All right. It's 7.35 to 7.45. That's normal ranges for blood pH. Now, in this question, it says that the patient has a 7.51. So is that acidosis or is that alkalosis? You hit it. Which one is it? You should be saying that that's alkalosis right now. So right now, I know that our patient has hypokalemia. I know that the patient is in a state of alkalosis. Now, I don't know if that's respiratory or metabolic just yet, but I do know that they're in alkalosis. Let's continue down the question. Next part says a partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 43 millimeters of mercury. Well, next piece, I got to understand what the heck is the normal range for carbon dioxide. I ask you this question again. <laughs> Go ahead, hit me. What's the normal range? You should be saying 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. All right, so is that within normal ranges? It is. So it's highly unlikely that we're dealing with some type of respiratory problem. It's not likely, let me say it again, not likely that we're dealing with a respiratory problem because carbon dioxide is within normal ranges. All right, let's continue on. It says HCO3, also known as your bicarbonate, is 32 milliequivalents per liter. What is the normal range of bicarbonate in the body? You should be saying uh, somewhere between 22 to 28. If you're looking at your Ellen Hillegas textbook, 22 to 28 milliequivalents per liter is normal. All right, so the fact that it says 32, that's way too high. So I know that there's some type of problem with the metabolic system because bicarbonate is a, a, a factor or is produced or is uh, regulated by the kidneys, all right? And so if there's this high amount, I know that there's something that's going on with the metabolic system with the kidneys here. So it says, which of the following findings is the most anticipated? Let's go through the answer choices. A says muscle twitching and or tetany. B says small respirations. C says increased chest AP diameter. And D is hyperventilation. Now, before I knock down these answer choices one by one, I want to say something to you. All right. It's important that you know the role of carbon dioxide in the body. 
All right, it's important that you know if that is an acid or a base. I will tell you right now, carbon dioxide acts as the acid in the blood. So the more carbon dioxide there is, the more acidic your blood's going to be. All right, and vice versa. The less carbon dioxide, then the more basic that your blood's going to be. Make sense? All right, now let's talk about the bicarbonate, HCO3 negative. Let's think about that. The more bicarbonate there is in the blood, the more basic the blood, all right? And the more or the less bicarbonate there is in the blood, the more acidic it will be. You might need to write those things down, but you need to know that for the MPTE. And with that understanding, now we can start to really dissect these answer choices. All right, A says muscle twitching or tetany. Now, does that make sense? Do we expect to find this with this particular patient? So here's the deal. From the question, I know that my patient is in alkalosis, and I know that the metabolic system, or it's a metabolic problem. So I'm dealing with metabolic alkalosis. The question is, do I expect muscle twitching and tetany with metabolic alkalosis? Yes or no? Hmm. The answer to that, is yes, I like that answer. And the reason why, why I like it is when you have metabolic alkalosis, tetany or even muscle twitching is a very common sign or symptom. Being that a lot of time with metabolic alkalosis, you have a patient who has hypokalemia, but they also can have this thing called hyper, hypocalcemia, hypocalcemia, all right, or decreased calcium in the bloodstream. Well, when we have that decreased blood, uh, blood calcium, what can happen is there's a lot more neuro excitability. All right. So you start to get things like muscle twitching and muscle tetany when there's lower amounts of calcium in the blood. All right. And we also see that when there's lower amount of potassium in the blood. All right. So muscle twitching makes sense here. I like it. Does it mean it's the best answer? No, but I do like the fact that muscle twitching tetany, um, you know, it, it is consistent with metabolic alkalosis. So we're going to put a check mark next to that for now, but let's go ahead and look at B. B says Kussmaul respirations. First of all, we got to understand what Kussmaul respirations are. Okay. They're going to be a form of hyperventilation. All right, it's where your patient is having these deep, labored breathing patterns. All right, they're, they're a lot of times gasping for air. Again, it's a form of hyperventilation. The question to you is, do you see this form of hyperventilation with a patient who has metabolic alkalosis? The answer to that is no. I wouldn't expect any form of hyperventilation. And the reason why is... And I need you to, I really need you to write this down. Hyperventilation decreases the amount of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream because you're breathing a lot faster. You're getting all that carbon dioxide out. And so if we decrease the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream, what does that do? Right? What does that do to the blood pH? You should be saying, well, Kyle, if we got rid of all the ca carbon dioxide, what's going to really happen is it's going to make it more basic more alkalotic. And the question is, do we want to do that? No, we would not see that. Reason being is that the patient's already in alkalosis. So why would we be seeing hyperventilation, which is going to push them even more into alkalosis? All right. So we would not expect to see any form of hyperventilation, to be honest with you. All right. So B would be out. I would not expect to see that. Let's go ahead and look at C. C says increased chest AP diameter. Now, do we know what that is? Let's talk for a minute. Do we know what increased chest AP diameter is? We're talking about front to back, all right, anterior to posterior diameter, aka barrel chest. Have you heard that before? What condition is associated with a barrel chest? You should be saying some type of obstructive lung condition, right? Maybe COPD and all the conditions that fall inside of that. Okay. So here's the deal. Would I expect to see increased chest AP diameter with a patient who has metabolic alkalosis? The answer is eh, no, I wouldn't. Reason being is that patients who have COPD are more likely to have something like 
respiratory acidosis. All right. And the reason being is that think about it. COPD, don't they have difficulty getting the air out? Okay. And if they have difficulty getting air out, then they must be holding on to a lot more CO2. Think about this. If you're holding on to more CO2, is CO2 acid or is it a base? We went over this already. You should be saying, oh, CO2 is definitely an acid. So it would drop the pH. All right. So we would not be seeing increased chest AP diameter because that would be respiratory acidosis more likely, not metabolic alkalosis. All right. So let's go ahead and eliminate C. Our final answer here, or our last, I should say, is D, hyperventilation. Hmm. Didn't we already have this conversation with B? It seems like B and D are very similar answers here. B said small respirations. We said that that was a form of hyperventilation. D just says the word hyperventilation, which would make that incorrect as well. Remember, we would not expect to really be seeing that because if the patient was hyperventilating, it would be pushing them even more into alkalosis. All right. So we would not be expecting that. Also, hyperventilation, we would be expecting that more so with somebody with that respiratory issue, not a metabolic one. All right. So our final answer here tonight is going to be muscle twitching or tetany. Remember, if you know, when it comes down to you, this whole muscle twitching and muscle tetany, it has a lot to do with the electrolyte dysfunction. Here, the patient's taking a loop diuretic. And so those can decrease the amount of potassium in the blood. They can also decrease the amount of calcium. When we have those lower levels of calcium in the bloodstream, it increases the neuro excitability, makes the nerves all wickedly crazy. And so that produces muscle twitching or tetany. All right. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. For those of you who didn't, listen, when it comes down to arterial blood gases, it's great for you to understand the pH and the normal values and what it means to be above or below. Same thing with carbon dioxide and bicarbonate. It's great to know the numbers, but it's even more effective if you know the freaking mnemonics regarding the signs and symptoms. If you have mnemonics that help you to remember the signs and symptoms, you're so much easier, or it's so much easier, I should say, for you to be able to pick out what the actual condition is that you're looking at. 